engineer in, tele, in an electronics engineer, getting the title in the University of Granada. Uh, since the year 2014, he is the director of the, of the Observatory of Calar Alto. And I want to mention that, uh, I mean, his role in the last year has been especially important due to the changes that we have been suffering in the observatory. First, the, the, crisis, the crisis that, that we suffer, and it was a very difficult period for the observatory. And second, also the change in the, in the composition of the uh, of the structure of the Observatory of Caral Alto, going from the MPG and, and CESIC to CESIC and Junta Andalucía, that is taken longer than thought, as, as you have already noticed. Uh, today he's going to talk about the public service and new instrumentation for Calar Alto Observatory, and this talk is a kind of preparatory, preparatory talk for the workshop that will be happening here in the Institute next March. Okay, then I think it will be very, very important to get the information that Jesus will be giving us. And, and then it's a good opportunity also to invite all of you to participate in the workshop in next March. Jesus, whenever you want. Thank you so much for the introduction. <clears throat> it's uh, always an honor uh, for me just to come here to this house, just uh, to speak about the things that are happening in the Observatory of Caral Alto. As uh, Anshon mentioned, uh, 2019 was a uh, a very particular year for us because uh, many things uh, happened, and well, especially due to the transition uh, in the partnership of the observatory. So, well, I just would like to split uh, the talk in four different sections. So, I just would like to spend some time just uh, to explain to you what's the current legal status of the observatory. Um, but I would like also to talk about the main scientific highlights that we have achieved in 2019, focusing especially in the current status of the legacy program that now are um, running at the observatory, but also the instrumental developments that we have done during 2019. But the main and the most relevant topic of this talk is going to be what, uh, what Anshon mentioned, is just um, to give you some tips about the public survey and the instrumentation call that we are going to do on next uh, March in the workshop that will be celebrated in this uh, house. So uh, if you are interested in this, uh, well, to submit a proposal, then this is your talk. <clears throat> okay, so just starting with the first section, uh, I think that most of you are already aware about the current situation, but maybe not from the small details. So uh, by the end of 2018, the very first uh, official meeting uh, of the member assembly, which is uh, the highest uh, body structure uh, of Caralto, met in Madrid just to agree, first, the withdrawal of the Max Planck Society as a, a Caja partner, and also to approve the consent of uh, the inclusion of Junta Andalucía as a, as a new partner. In any case, that, uh, that was a, a meeting, official meeting, but uh, the very first legal uh, event happened in May in 2019, where the Max Planck Society transferred its participation to Junta Andalucía at the notary. Anyway, there were a lot of uh, homework to be done uh, for the incoming months. And uh, by, uh, just late in December, in the last year, uh, the new member assembly met uh, just to formalize the creation of this uh, new member assembly uh, and also to formalize the incorporation of the new partnership. Basically, this is uh, an action needed uh, to approve the budget um, of 2019. But during all this time, uh, we are still preparing the new legal statutes. This is uh, taking so long, more than one year, and mm, the basic idea are, are two issues. Well, first, uh, Caja will continue with a very similar um, structure. We will continue, uh, continue being um, as a grouping economic of interest. But maybe the most relevant change is that Caja will be considered as a general administration. And this will affect definitely to our working mode. Uh, as we are negotiating the, uh, the new legal institutes, um, the, the worst thing that happened during 2018 is that there is a lack of the executive committee. The executive committee is absolutely necessary to take the high level decisions, like for example, issues related to the personnel or, for example, uh, uh, to sign a relevant memorandum of understanding with other institutions. Fortunately, the, uh, the positions are already defined, and uh, we expect that in the coming weeks, 
uh, the member assembly uh, will approve the legal statutes and therefore uh, the new executive committee uh, will be named. <clears throat> As a reminder, this is our management structure at the highest level, as I told, uh, is uh, located in the member assembly, comprised uh, of the president of the SIC and also the minister of Junta Andalucía, in this case, the minister of economy, research and technology and universities. Uh, uh, well, for most of the actions, uh, we have the executive committee, comprised of uh, three members from uh, each uh, partner. Uh, so uh, in the case of the SIGs are the uh, vice president of uh, research and technology, uh, the IA director, and also the deputy uh, vice president of uh, institutional relationship. And from the Junta Andalucía side, uh, the members uh, will be the general secretary of universities and uh, research and technology, the main director of uh, uh, research, and uh, a representative from the universities. Uh, most of the actions uh, are delegated to the CAHA director. And the CAHA director may uh, uh, well, have some different advisory committees, like the scientific <laughs> advisory committee or the financial committee or the time allocation committee. In all this uh, structure, the IAA will play a very important role because it has been defined or will be defined as the uh, only referring institution to, uh, to help to develop uh, the scientific and the technological strategy for the observatory. So, uh, well, something important to note here as well is that the CAHA director is uh, the link with the scientific community. So if you have an inquiry, please get contact with me instead to contact directly with the executive committee. Okay, another uh, brief words about the uh, main highlights that we have achieved in 2019. I will show you some slides with the most relevant results. Like for example, the storming year in 2018 of Saturn is a work just published in Nature Astronomy, or uh, different results, very interesting results that uh, the Carmen Survey is now producing. Like, for example, it found an anomalous planetary system that challenged our understanding uh, of how planets form. This is a, a work published in, in Science, or the space and ground based observations that reveals a planetary tree around a nearby star. More results uh, of Carmenes. Like, for example, the, well, it found two temperature terrestrial planets around T Garden star, but there are more results apart from Carmenes, like, for example, a near green P galaxy, analog to the first galaxy that shows how the young universe became illuminated. More results of 2019. For example, uh, the study of the, correlation, the galaxy correlation with their moving neighbors, or the massive star that prefers a higher order multiplicity over binarity. Okay, in this plot you can see our historic uh, record of publications, uh, reference publications that use Sakara Alto data. We are so proud just to say that already in 2018 we bet our record uh, with uh, 111 publications, but we have kept this uh, value in 2019, uh, just considering that we have uh, two uh, large surveys running on the 3.5 and also at the 2.2, and normally long surveys uh, start producing, not immediately, but after some time. In terms of long weather statistics, you can see that 2019 uh, was uh, the best, uh, val the third value in our, world, well, in the last, well, in all our history, since 1976, probably a, a sign of a, um, climatic change. And also, I just want to show you this uh, um, plot that shows you the, our subscription factor. <laughs> Basically, it measures the interest of the scientific community in the CAHA <laughs> telescope and instrumentation. You can see that all the time, uh, the factors are changing between 2.2 and 3.5. But we are proud also to say that uh, um, very often, we are able just to get a factor almost of three for both telescopes. I'm also so proud just to show always this uh, uh, plot because uh, it shows the skills of our staff. This represents the observing time lost due to technical problems. And you can see that in 2019, for the case of the 3.5, we lost less than 1% of the available time. And this is because uh, that we have the best staff that uh, an observatory may have. Well, also during 2018, we were able just to close, uh, to sign uh, different agreements with the Andalusian universities in a three-way action protocol together with the SIC, 
and the University of Almeria first, then Seville, Jaén, and now we are just working with the Granada University that we expect to sign shortly. The main actions for this agreement are, well, just to establish a scientific and technical collaborations, involved to the students via different formulas, like, for example, internships, work or their degree, master or their degree, etc. And activities have focus into the academic collaboration, like, for example, summer schools or complementary studies, and, of course, outreach activities. Okay, just to understand what's uh, the reason for the workshop that we are going to celebrate in, the, uh, in March, it's important also to say here what's the current status of the legacy programs. So, uh, beyond any doubt, our uh, strategic program at the moment is uh, the Carmen survey. The instrument will be in operation with no doubt uh, for the next decade. And as you may know, this is an international collaboration with 13 institutions and more than 130 uh, scientific and technical staff. At the moment, there are uh, close to 40 referred papers, and most of them we are published uh, in the, uh, during the last year. This is uh, an example of how, some, uh, how long surveys, uh, at the very beginning, they need some time to start publishing. There are um, 24 presentations in SPI uh, meetings and uh, 13 uh, PhD work thesis. We establish as well a collaboration with uh, uh, the uh, NASA mission called TESS, where 50 nights we are located. Indeed, the first alert we already received. At the moment, we have invested with tonight 678 uh, successful nights. And just to fulfill with our um, original commitment with, uh, with the Carmen S. Consortium, uh, there are more than 70 uh, um, pending nights. This is basically one more semester. So we expect that during the second semester of 2020, the Carmen uh, um, survey probably will be done. So this is uh, the first reason why we need this workshop, because uh, we need just uh, to find for new long-term surveys uh, programs. The second uh, survey that uh, at the moment we are executing at the observatory is an agreement with the Beijing uh, University uh, that called Reverberation Mapping Survey of AGN. This is done with the 2.2 and the CAFOS instrument. The goals are what you have in these slides. So it's just to measure the black hole masses or to study the coevolution of supermassive black holes and host galaxies, to measure the high uh, redshift quasars and cosmic reionization, and uh, to study the central engine AGN. Okay, that survey was approved by an executive committee resolution in 2016. It used basically the 60% of the available time, so we are investing a total of 110 nights per semester. And at the moment, we have allocated in total uh, more than 600 nights. Uh, 62 targets we are observed, and we have collected more than 3,000 epochs of a spectra. At the moment, the production is not going to be very, well, it's not going very, uh, it's running very, very slowly. And indeed, only one paper has been upset. Uh, there are four more in preparation, and we expect that in the coming months, uh, this uh, could change. Uh, we, uh, as I told you, normally the long term, and especially this uh, agreement, needs uh, just to collect a lot of uh, data. The results pending to be published, uh, well, uh, they found a few targets with two components of the broad emission line region and two H beta lags. This has been never found before. There are a few targets that have a long-term trending, but the mechanisms remain still open. There are also a few targets that have a weak or even no reverberation in science, and this leaves a big puzzle. Uh, and they have confirmed that super A-inton accreting AGN have a shorter lag than the normal AGN. What are the, sp the expectations? Well, uh, mm, they intend to find the rules of two components and two lags, or in other words, they, uh, they are signatures from, uh, from the single epoch uh, spectra, and to build up uh, a tighter uh, radio emission uh, luminosity relation by adding extra observational parameters. They just also want to, joint, uh, to perform joint observations with other facilities, like for example, gravity and BLTI, for the black hole mass and cosmological distance, distances after the publication of 3, uh, 3, 3C, 2, 3, 273 in nature astronomy. 
Okay. In terms of the developments that we have done uh, during 2019, there are a lot of things, but the, maybe the most relevant one was the upgrade of the shell spectral at CAFE that is running at the 2.2. By using European Regional Development Funds, we have uh, substituted the grating, and with this uh, we are just uh, um, achieving again the original sensitivity of the instrument, close to 14th magnitude. We have stabilized the temperature in the room that hosts the instrument, uh, with an accuracy of about 0.01 de uh, degree. A new pipeline has been developed by Jorge Lillo Box, and with this we are getting a radial velocity accuracy of about 10 meters per second. We are just preparing a new fabric perot calibration unit that will be ready, likely for, uh, for, uh, for the summer. And in the second phase, we are just um, applying for more European regional development funds uh, to develop a vacuum chamber. Uh, with this, we expect to improve the radial velocity accuracy down to two to five meters per second. With this action, we expect, apart from uh, to enhance the performance of the instrument, also to reduce the pressure in the visible channel of Carmen's because uh, some of the programs uh, could be done at the 2.2 with this uh, facility. It's not the only thing that we have done. We are also upgrading Cafe, uh, Panic, sorry, also by using European Regional Development Funds uh, with a total cost of about one million of euros. And this is a collaboration between, uh, well, there are four institutions involved, uh, in the Max Planck Institute at Heidelberg, IAA, and the uh, Astrophysical Institute in Poznan, and of course, CAHA. The idea is just to substitute the low uh, quality uh, grade detectors that uh, we are the original ones by a single monolithic one uh, with the same number of pixels, but with no gaps. So uh, the field of view will be slightly shorter. It's a 30 by 30 down to, 70, to 27 by 27, but no gap will mean a very more optimal uh, observation strategy. We received the detector in September 2019 and was immediately delivered to Heidelberg with the, with the instrument. And at the moment, uh, they are just integrating into panic. Indeed, they are just uh, performing the connection and well, the connection test that will be finished by the end of this month the, uh, with an engineer uh, grade detector. And uh, the scientific grade detector will be installed by the beginning in February, will be cooled down and start the final test. We expect the final commissioning to be done in June or July 2020. There are more things, like for example, we have a great completely the virtualization system of the campus by substituting all the main servers uh, at the observatory. And uh, now we are working in the implementation of energetic island that you have already uh, heard about this in previous talks probably. But now, uh, well, there are three phases. The first one is the acquisition of some electric cars. It's already complete. But now we are in the public tender uh, evaluation of the photoelectric plants of about 350 kilowatts and the biomass boiler. So we expect to finish this um, by the summer. And we also, the expectations uh, uh, are to save uh, close to 160 uh, tons per year of CO2. And of course, we want to become, again, in a worldwide reference for other observatories in terms of uh, energetic uh, resources management. In terms of the future instrumentation, uh, well, uh, you probably remember that in uh, 2016, Caralto, um, uh, again, at the, IAA, at the IAA, celebrated a, another scientific workshop um, for the search of new instrumentation. And indeed, we made a call uh, for letter of construction of the next generation of instrumentation for the 3.5 in May 2018. Um, on that time, uh, the observatory commit uh, a, a maximum of 100,000 euros uh, that from, from Junta Andalucía and to be executed via the University of Almería. For signed cases, uh, we are submitted and an instrumental scientific advisory committee evaluated positively uh, two of them, Luca and Carmenes upgrade. Okay, um, Luca is a new intended to be uh, a new instrument to study the, uh, the galaxies in the local universe from Caralto. And uh, the feasibility study was performing, uh, was coordinated by AEA and was split in three different uh, institutions uh, for the University of Macquarie, the University of Durham, 
and uh, wind light. So in July 2019, the feasibility study was finalized and the final technical report sent to CAHA. And after an exhaustive analysis of the, pres uh, the presidency of the seat conclude uh, three things. First, to recognize the excellence of the scientific case and the effort done for the feasibility study by the LUCA team. Secondly, it decided that the continuity of the project will require a deeper analysis of other competing programs, time framework, and a financial strategy, and as well, the availability, the availability of the required scientific technical team. As a consequence, the SIC decided not to continue. That was indeed the second reason why we are so interested in this uh, workshop in March, because apart from the public service, uh, we are also searching for new instrumentation. And, and now we can get into the details for this workshop. First, <clears throat> some background. CAHA has a strategic plan that is elaborated uh, each uh, four years, and this is because our ICT is uh, nature. Uh, the renew was done in two, uh, for, uh, for the period of 2017 to 2020, and uh, this uh, strategic plan was uh, evaluated, very well evaluated, by the CAIS, the Comité Assessor de Infraestructuras Singulares. Uh, the priorities uh, we are defined at first to develop a new instrument for the 3.5 and or the 2.2, and secondly, the upgrade of carbonates. The, uh, the good thing uh, just to be an ICTS is that we have the possibility to get some European regional development funds to partially fund the new instrument. Partially means that some co-funding is needed, and normally to develop a new instrument, uh, the total cost uh, exceeds the, uh, the amount that we may apply, that maybe is around one to three uh, in, in a practical mode. The bad news is that this must be committed before the end of 2020, so the schedule is going to be tight. Four are the goals for this workshop. First, as I told, we are very interested in uh, public surveys to be carried out with the current instrumentation available at the 3.5 telescope. Not at the 2.2, because, because you may remember that at the moment we have an agreement that although it will be re uh, reviewed as soon as we have an executive committee, uh, uh, we have a commitment with them until um, 2022. Secondly, just uh, to search for public surveys to be carried out with new instrumentations. And in this case, uh, we also include to the 2.2. The reason is because normally to develop a new instrument takes something like uh, four to five years or six or even longer. So uh, for that moment, uh, the commitment with the Beijing University will be done. So that's the reason why we include the 2.2 as well. This workshop has to be considered as the official call for new legacy and also instrumental programs. So there will not be another call after that. This is indeed uh, the call. And also, it's important to note here that the final decision corresponds to the executive committee. The result of the workshop will become a recommendation uh, to the executive committee for execution. So the idea is just to get a scientific advisory committee ready by the end of this workshop that evaluates all all the proposals, and this science, uh, scientific advisory committee will do the recommendation. So basically, there are two cases. The case one is uh, the public uh, surveys so with the available instrumentation, and there are some requirements. It will consider a legacy program, those programs with at least uh, 20 nights uh, per semester, and uh, spread in at least uh, four semesters. If you are thinking in less of serving time, then simply apply to the uh, standard uh, call for proposals. Uh, of course, they may use other CAHA telescope and external ones. Of course, the uh, external collaboration will be always um, welcome. Uh, Non-partners may apply, this is important, but always in a very close collaboration with FSIC or Junta Andalucía institutions. The recommended uh, role is uh, as a co-PI. And also it's important to consider here that IAFSIC is the referring institutions. So we will we'll be pretty welcome the, uh, to establish collaboration with IAA. For the second case, in case of instrumentation, uh, the legacies, uh, mm, well, the main requirement is that the impossibility to be done with the current instrumentation. If you are thinking to, uh, to do something, but uh, uh, this can be done somehow with the current instrumentation, maybe apply for the first case. 
And uh, Canal Alto will fund up to two feasibility studies. Again, the non-partners may apply, but the same reasons than before, in very close collaboration with FSIC or Junta Andalucía institutions. Again, the recommended role is as co-PI. Some important dates. Well, the first announcement was made by November in 2019. The second announcement happened just a few days ago. The deadline for proposals is February 14th, and the scientific program will be published by the end of the month. The workshop will be celebrated in 1213 um, in March here at IAA. And uh, um, we expect to perform all the evaluations uh, in the first half of April to perform the recommendation to the executive committee. We are going to delay the standard uh, call for proposals uh, from March 23 to April 22 in just only a few days. This is not uh, well, the official, well, we normally take in 15 of March or so. Uh, just to have a, a good idea about uh, um, what the legacy could be for the, for the next semesters. And uh, we expect an immediate easy resolution uh, during April. And uh, um, the maximum period of time expected for the feasibility study has to be six months. Please do not consider the feasibility study as a conceptual design review. It's not the case. It's a feasibility study. So in principle, six months uh, should be possible. There are still some Caja homeworks that we have to do. First, of course, we have to, <laughs> to have a fully operative uh, executive committee. As I told us at the beginning of the talk, we expect this, happen, this to happen during, the, well, during January, probably the first uh, week of, uh, of February. The executive committee has to name as well the scientific advisory committee. So they should be available in any case um, for March. And uh, something good to know is that the uh, member assembly of CAJA has already committed 180,000 uh, euros for the feasibility studies. This should be, a, this should be enough for at least uh, two of the feasibility uh, proposals. OK, just in case that you are interested in, uh, to submit uh, a proposal for the case one, uh, you have to, uh, to send a PDF document. It's a very similar to the standard of serving proposals, but with a free style. So we expect to, uh, to get an extract of the scientific case describing the impact on competitors, the state of the art of the scientific rationale, the participant entities, project collaborators, and league with companies, just in case, and of course, the justification of the observing time. As you see, this is a very typical observing proposal. Uh, so uh, send this uh, PDF document in English with a maximum of six pages to this uh, email address, workshop at caja.s. And they are also available, a link for frequent answers and questions. Um, this is uh, being updated uh, as soon as a new question is made. The procedure for the case one, in the case of the evaluation and the final execution is what you can see in this slide. We are just following exactly the same strategy that we have followed in our work history. So that was just the same for uh, similar uh, surveys and also for the same case of the instrumental developments. So the teams made the proposal and are sent to the CAHA director. And uh, in this case, in a period of uh, shorter than a month, the scientific advisory committee has to make the evaluation of all the proposals. So um, with the best cases, a recommendation will be done to the Caralto Executive Committee. And in that case, in case that the Executive Committee approve, a memorandum of understanding will be signed, not before, uh, with the institution. In that case, we expect to perform the implementation in the second semester of 2020. As I told, the schedule is going to be tight. In the case of new developments, well, we uh, require also a PDF document written in English, in this case with a maximum of 10 pages, and uh, very similar to the previous one. So uh, you have to describe the abstract and the scientific case, the impact on competitors, the state of the art of the scientific rationale, the justification of the requested observing time, a technical description 
all the capabilities of the instrument and do not consider this. Well, we don't expect here a very mm, deep detail about the instrument itself, but we have to know what you intend to do. I mean, um, for the details, uh, you will have some time during the feasibility um, phase and uh, if the project continues in the <coughs> next phases. But uh, at this level, uh, keep in mind that this is a, a document uh, as long as, uh, well, the maximum 10 pages. So we expect only a general description here. And of course, a description of the consortium. And again, we don't expect here that you have a very well uh, consortium already created with expertise and so on and so on. What we expect is a description about the different institutions that are involved in the project. And as in the previous case, send this document to workshop at caja.es. The procedure in this case is, is slightly different, but uh, follows the same uh, role that I told before. That was the same procedure that we follow, for example, with Carmenes. So the teams made a proposal, and a scientific advisory committee evaluate all the proposals. With the best cases, this is recommended um, to the Calalto uh, Executive Committee for, um, uh, that will uh, take a decision about which uh, one will continue. For those ones, as I told, Caralto will fund up to two feasibility studies, and in a period of uh, not longer than six months, uh, the feasibility study report has to be uh, um, sent back. So again, the Scientific Advisory Committee will evaluate uh, this feasibility study and will make another recommendation to the Caralto Executive Committee. If Caralto Executive Committee approve the uh, instrumental development, then a Caja then Caja will apply for funds uh, to the European Union, and then a, a general memorandum of understanding will be signed. I must say here that in this phase, we will also sign a feasibility study for memorandum of, of understanding. But please, do not confuse this memorandum of understanding with this. This uh, will um, comprise of only the period for the feasibility study. After that, uh, just uh, when the feasibility studies, uh, if you are aware um, to, uh, to perform the feasibility study, the, uh, this money is not going to be a blank check. Uh, so there are some um, requirements that the observatory is going to require to you. And uh, although uh, we will uh, publish this uh, in our web page, but uh, we will need some uh, scientific and technical uh, issues to evaluate this feasibility study. Again, I just want to note here that this is exactly the same procedure that we have followed in our history, for Carmenes, for instance. So there are basically three sections where you have to prepare for the feasibility studies. So first, you have to describe, of course, the scientific purpose and the competitiveness analysis and the main scientific case of the instrument within the proposed period and the methodology that you want to follow. The description of the scientific requirements, main general, this will depend on the instrument, of course, but for example, resolution, spectral range, sensitivity, uh, sampling, these kind of things. Um, the description of the technical instrument. Again, here, do not consider this, that you have to present in six months a very well detailed technical description of the instrument. This is for the visibility study. It's not even a conceptual design review, but just to commit some million of euros, the executive committee will need as much as information you may provide. Uh, the justification of the request is observing time and the description of the observing plan. If you are going to spread in three, four, five years, in 20 years, then you have to justify why. The proposed location of the instrument at Caja, we, we have to know if your uh, intention is uh, to attach it to the Casagrain or to place in a second floor or what you want to do. A general control of the instrument. This is basically just to have a general overview of the instrument. The same for computer facilities, uh, server storage system. As I told, we have renewed our virtualization system. So maybe somehow it's compliant with the facility that we have. So that's uh, the reason why we need this description. This description the time allocation of the observations, and the compatibility with the current scientific programs. In the case that there are other legacy programs on, uh, ongoing, we have to know what are your expectations, just to evaluate if this is uh, compliant or not with the current observing programs at the observatory. The section two, 
is related to the description of the consortium. So what we need here, again, is a proposal of the consortium. We don't expect you to create a, a consortium already for this feasibility study, but we have to know if they are national, international partners, not partners, and of course, if they are legally authorized. That means that we are not going to sign a memorandum of understanding, for example, with uh, uh, the um, Astronomical Amateurs Association or whatever. That means that they have to get the legal um, capacity of signature. We also expect from you a distribution of the different tasks and responsibility. We have to know very well what's the plan work packages. In this sense also that there is a project structure. Do not present a project if it's not clear, uh, or, um, at least the role of the main actors in a project. And, of, and this is very important, what is the expected uh, timetable and milestones? When do you expect to celebrate the CDR, PDR, FDR, all the phases uh, associated to this kind of projects? Of course, a web page, the probably is the easiest part. And finally, um, in the third section, but also very important, is related to the financial report. As I told, Caralto uh, could apply for European Regional Development Funds, and although we have to wait until uh, an executive committee resolution, but we expect that it will be feasible to get around 1.5 to 2 million of euros, where co-funding is needed. And not only this, we said this amount of money is not enough normally to develop a big instrument. So, we need to know what's the capacity of the um, potential consortium to self-financing, uh, because this will help a lot to take a decision. If not, then we will try to find other solutions, but we have to know uh, what is the capacity of the consortium to self-financing. In this case, it will be great just uh, to uh, specify the proposed strategy, what is going to be the distribution of a budget between the potential institutions uh, the expected contribution of the members. The, uh, what do you expect from Caralto? Maybe you say, no, no, we expect from Caralto this amount of money or not. So this has to think, just to be evaluated, we have to know. The, uh, the estimation of the human resources, and of course, very important, very important as usual, a Gantt diagram. Otherwise, it's very difficult just to evaluate what you want to do. Again, keep in mind that after the feasibility study, the executive committee has to take a very important decision that will affect an, a, a large amount of money. So if the information is not enough, then the executive committee will not be able just to take the decision. So just, uh, this is just the last slide. slide. So uh, I encourage you just uh, to register in our webpage or in this straight link. We really have a very uh, big expectations Again, I think that uh, especially this house uh, has a very important role as the um, institution uh, considered as a reference for, uh, for the observatory. So from the observatory, we really encourage you to consider uh, to, our, to submit a proposal for any of the two cases. If you have any question or something after this talk, um, then you may uh, write an email to this uh, email address, workshop at caja.es, and we'll try to answer you as soon as possible. In any case, I'm here for any question that you may have. Thank you so much. Okay, thanks, Jesus, for all the information. Just let me make some, some points, some few points. The first one is, as Jesus has mentioned, we still don't have the executive committee, and also the statutes have not been approved. They, they were considered to be approved during this January. No news up to now. We hope that it will happen. But in any case, what is important to mention also is that this workshop has the full support of both partners, Junta Andalucía and CSIC. Okay? Uh, both the uh, General Secretary of uh, Science and Research, or whichever it is, from the Junta Andalucía and the Presidency of CSIC have given the full support to the celebration of this workshop. Okay, then it's time for questions. Any, any question you may have, please ask it. Thank you, Jesus. Just a short question. Uh, have you or are you considering the possibility, just the possibility, is well justified, of modifying uh, 
some of the telescopes, at some of the FOSI, uh, to, to get a larger field of view. Like I am just uh, um, watch for the for the for the Herschel telescope, for example. Yeah. It's a proposal, a scientific proposal that justify this action. It will be considered as well. Yeah, why not? But it has to be always a scientific, uh, a very good scientific proposal that justify. But, uh, well, we have different telescopes, and maybe, well, I don't know if this will be feasible. Well, feasible is always, you know, but uh, um, almost, almost. But uh, could be an option for any of the telescopes, yes. Thank you, thank you, Jesus, for this uh, you know interesting talk and very informative. One of my questions is concerning one the slide corresponding to the number of hours of uh, 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 serving nights you have. The number of hours, I think. Yeah, yeah this one. All right. So, did this. Uh, you know, accounting all the different telescopes, all right? Oh, this is our mm, uh, per night of our, you know, per night, but uh, assuming because of the information that we get from the from the observers, and uh, normally this number match uh, for both telescopes uh, for the 3.5 and 2.2. .2. There's no discrepancies between both for a single night, you know. Um, at the end of the night, the, uh, the technical astronomer fill a report with the total available time, and excepting for those cases uh, of technical problems, uh, the numbers uh, fit for the 3.5 and 2.2. The question is that you know it's not only corresponding to the fraction of, uh, of uh, you know observable hours, but. The question is that, for example, in the in the case that you had the maximum, uh, you had three telescopes, two telescopes, uh, it's, it's only with the two telescopes, or for example, you have including here hours with the 1.2 uh, meter telescope or something like that. All in the, for the observatory. For the observatory. It, it's not the amount of different telescopes summed together. It's not that. More questions? Okay. Oh. So, so uh, th thank you very much, Jesus. That was such a nice talk. Uh, so, so what, what the call is going to be, just to confirm, is just for the 2.2 .2 and the 3.5, right? for both telescopes, legacy programs, uh, only for the 3.5. Legacy for 3.5 and instruments for 2.2. Well, you know, for 2020B, for example, there's no time available for a long-term legacy program because uh, we have the Beijing agreement ongoing. So, yeah. Thank you. 2.2 .2 for the instrumental cases is uh, what I mentioned before. Uh, normally, the, the new developments um, may require something like four to six years or so and for that uh, time, uh, the Beijing agreement will be done. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for this talk. Um, my question is about the... Um, what, what, what you have in mind as a link between the current status of operation of the 3.5 to the stage where the new instrumentation will be already in operation? Because this would take more or less five, six years. Well, then which is the, what, what you have in mind? Uh, in principle, just to wait, uh, just to see the proposals. Uh, mm. Uh, likely, there will be proposal uh, from the Kamenes uh, um, Consortium in terms of uh, uh, new legacies and likely new developments. We have to wait until, until the submissions. 
but uh, well, uh, I'm not sure if I'm understanding correctly the question, but in any case, uh, a new development will not be ready or available until this time, so will not be a problem for the normal Carmen's operation. In, in, in some sense, uh, Carmenes has to ha, have, has to be extended uh, its operation in order to. Beyond any doubt, Carmenes uh, instrument will be in operation beyond any doubt for the next decade. Okay. Uh, is uh, coming to the to the center. Uh, Carmenes uh, will be in operation for the next decade and will be offered to the community. Uh, you have also to keep in mind that uh, we, have, we have also a limitation as an, an ICTS nature that we have to offer the 20% of the available time as an open time. And um, even other programs um, different than Carmenes are approved for during this uh, workshop, thing that I cannot imagine because Car the logical thing is that Carmenes will continue. But even in the worst of the scenarios, uh, Carmenes will be available during this 20% uh, of the open time. But in any case, uh, well, to me, it will be pointless that Carmenes uh, mm, signs that at the moment are producing a lot of very nice results will not continue. In any case, this is a, a, that will be a recommendation of the Science Advisory Committee and a final decision of the Executive Committee. This is very important to know. And again, uh, just uh, to, to say uh, in the words that uh, Anton told, this is um, the procedure that we have followed during our history, but the final decisions correspond to the executive committee. Uh, thanks, Jesus, for, for the talk. Um, uh, I have a question regarding uh, what can be included in the proposals. Uh, in case that we want to submit a proposal, someone wants to submit a proposal uh, that's going to carry out a science case, and for this science case, uh, one of the instruments already available there, the 3.5 meters is needed. But to support the science case, it is very important to have some additional instrumentation outside of the 3.5 meter telescope. Mm, say, for instance, a new relatively small or relatively big telescope performing photometry simultaneously with the other instrument. Would this be uh, uh, channeled through this, uh, through this uh, um, call or, or in a different way? It's pretty clear which are the um, primary goals and the secondary uh, goals. I mean, if you are proposing an additional developments uh, different than 3.5 and 2.2, and this is the primary goal, probably you don't have many chances. In any case, that would, be, that would depend on the evaluation. But I have the feeling that, uh, uh, that would not, this will not be the best strategy. The best strategy is that uh, you want to propose something for the 3.5 or the 2.2, and as a complementary issue, you need other things. This can be studied and can be evaluated. But in any case, in the other way around, I would say that it's not a good option. Uh, okay, from, from your slide, is, uh, you know, it's outstanding, the low productivity of the Beijing collaboration. Uh, do you have uh, any explanation able to be known for that? According to the, to the main uh, aim of the collaboration, it's true that uh, they need to gather a lot of data uh, just to, uh, to confirm um, some of the things that they are searching. Uh, they are already two and a half years. And uh, um, during the next executive committee, as in all the executive committees, uh, all these uh, long-term uh, legacies are reviewed. Review, I don't think that means uh, to stop, but review means that probably the available time can be reconsidered uh, for the program. Uh, in any case, it's true that because of the, of, the, of the original aim of the program, it's true that they need to gather a lot of uh, data. And it's also true that in our expertise, this is something more or less normal for long-term legacies. Carmenes, for instance. Carmenes, uh, the productivity 
just correct me, Pedro, but uh, the productivity of Carmenes start producing very nice results in 2018 because they need just to gather a lot of uh, um, spectra. Otherwise, they cannot confirm anything. So we expect that in coming, of course, uh, we cannot wait forever. I mean, at some point. It's, um, it's logical up to the moment. At, in any case, this is a bet. I mean, because uh, um, for this kind of long-term legacy programs, uh, well, we have some expectations. We expect that this uh, is going to be confirmed, but always it's a bet. In any case, uh, I just want to tell you that during the old executive committee, the point is that during 2018, there was no executive committee just to review. But uh, Carmenes and um, Khalifa at that time, um, Alhambra at that time, they are always reviewed uh, during, during the executive committees. Question? OK, then just let me mention also that in the virtual meeting of the Partners Assembly that was celebrated on December 20th, yeah, the, this assembly, uh, this Partner Assembly is formed by the President of the SIC and the Minister of the Junta Andalucía, Consejero. And in this uh, meeting, they agreed that 180,000 euros are available for the performance of the feasibility studies. Okay, then it means that two will be possible to be done. Okay, these are really good news, and uh, as you mentioned. Hmm? Well, at some point, it's, uh, uh, well, I'm not sure where it is, but yeah. I mean, you, you mentioned that again. Okay, and the second thing is also that Jesus is giving a number of talks in Spain. Also, you will go to Madrid, no? Yes. And I don't know. And to Barcelona. Presentation also, okay, and he is available uh, for any question you make. You may have in the next weeks before the sure. submission date. Okay, then thanks a lot, Jesus, and good luck for the observatory. That will be good for us also.